Allah That was Brother Adil Nuri reciting in his melodious voice. Um, Alhamdulillah, Hafiz Sahib is just uh, on his way, inshallah, uh, to the live stream. Uh, Alhamdulillah, he's in, he's in no need of any introduction. Alhamdulillah, you, you know his videos are widely available. Um, Alhamdulillah, he travels across the globe uh, defending the Muslims of Imam al-Sunnah. 
and uh, defending the creed of the Ahlul Sunnah al Jamaat. So Alhamdulillah, we are blessed to have got some time off them. So Inshallah, our brother Raid Atari has also joined us, and Inshallah, he'll be asking Alama a few questions regarding our beliefs. So Inshallah, and in a short while, Inshallah, Sab will join us. Uh, so I will request Brother Adil Muri to request uh, a few shares of Munkabad uh, whilst waiting for Lama Sahib. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, salatu wa sallam alayhi wa sallam, ya Rasulullah, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Oh, kya mertabai Tera <laughs> Try to add them back, inshallah. So, inshallah, let's go sort out everything, inshallah. So, I should come back. Inshallah, so I'm going to wait for them. Just adding it again. Salam, come on, Afsab. Assalamu alaikum, can you hear me now? Alhamdulillah, Zakala, so we can hear you now. Can you hear us okay? Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum. Ji, Uzur, Labbaik. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ji, Ji, Alhamdulillah. How are you, Uzur? Are you okay? Can you hear me now? G -G. I can hear you. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, okay, yeah. Jazakallah. Achha, Alhamdulillah. Um, Rai Bhai will be asking you a few questions. Are you clear now? 
Ji ji inshallah. Inshallah, I know your time is limited, so inshallah. Yes, brother. Inshallah, we can start if. Acha, we feel say drop ogi line. Is it going to Sri Lanka? Are they live from Sri Lanka? Yeah, yeah, live from Sri Lanka, inshallah. Inshallah, let's go. Look at it, we feel say. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, well, sir, now it's better, sir. Okay. Alham, sorry for the technical okay. issues. Um, alhamdulillah, no, no, blessed to you. No worries. I'll get some time of no Hafizab. So, inshallah, without sure. further delay, inshallah, we'll uh, press ahead, inshallah. Sure. And apply. Yeah. Assalamu alaikum, Hafizab. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. MashaAllah. So we'll get straight into the topic. As Salman said, you are limited for time. Uh, Hafiz Sahib, we wanted to discuss Hadith today. As we know many times when you provide evidence from Quran and Hadith, nobody can deny the Quran because the Quran is and always will be the uh, word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which, which cannot be changed. But in regards to Hadith, we constantly hear things like this Hadith is say, this Hadith is daif. What is hadith categories and how many different hadith categories are there? Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Nahmaduhu, and Nusulli, and Nusulli, and Allah Rasul Hil Karim, Rose Avam Bamane, Besar Osama, Madade, Kibla, Di, Madade, Kaabe, Ima, Madade. Actually, the scholars of the hadith, the Muhaddithun, they have categorized many ahadith such as Mutawatir, Mashhur, Sahih, Hassan, Gharib. Hassan li dhatihi, Hassan li ghayrihi, da'if, etc. Now, there are many categories. Now, the reason for this categorization is that the way they have got the narration through the chains of the narrators, they not only look at the words of Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but because the words of our Nabi are obviously perfect, there's no doubt about it. But sure. the chain sure. through which it has come, they check on the narrator's life history if there is any shortcoming in their history, such as if they had left a sunnah of Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa or if they had forgotten anything, for example, if I say the reward of Suratul Ikhlas reciting thrice is the reward of one holy Quran. So instead of this, if I say reciting Suratul Ikhlas four times is a reward of one Quran, and if you correct me saying, no, Hafizab, it is for three recitation of Surah Al-Ikhlas, reward of one Quran. And I agree. Yes, yes, it is my mistake. What you said is right. So even if a muhaddith forgets in this manner, if a rawi forgets in this manner, that hadith will be categorized as a da'if hadith. So again, it doesn't mean that it is not the hadith. Due to the minor error of one of the narrators from the narrator's chain, the muhaddith soon have categorized so that the ruling of Fard, ruling of haram, halal are not derived from that particular hadith, only from the sahih hadith. So this is a precautional sake. And those very scholars who have given these rulings, they have said that though uh, because this is a hadith, so we can take these hadith for the virtuous acts. So for the da'if hadith, we should not reject it. It is acceptable for the virtuous things but we won't take that hadith to say that it is must upon you to do this it is further upon you Achy. for that ruling it, it won't be taken for that yeah, only okay. the sahih so, mutawatira hadith will be taken mashallah so uh, uh Hafsab, you said there um, a very important point when choosing whether something is halal or haram you use sahih hadith for precaution is that correct Jazakallah. yeah because from this sahih hadith that can be derived Jazakallah. Um, and in regards to uh, Alama Sahib, uh, I think uh, uh, the term is ijtihad when like uh, Imam Abani for the four madhabs. Do, has ever a ruling been derived from a weak hadith, a daif hadith? Has that ever happened or would, uh, has that ever happened? Sir? <laughs> it's a very good question. But uh, let us just technically go in order to counter those people who are against the Ijtihad of the Mujtahidun. Now you see, as we mentioned earlier, the Muhaddithun who categorized the Ahadith, they came later on after the Imams mostly, this job was done like Imam Bukhari, Imam Muslim, etc. Okay, now in a Hadith, even if you refer to Bukhari Sharif, you find three narrators, four narrators, five narrators. 
but when it comes to Imam Abu Hanifa rahmatullahi alayhi, either he has taken the narration from a Sahabi or from a Tabi'i. So maximum two narrations. Similarly, similarly Imam Malik rahmatullahi alayhi, he has taken the hadith from a Tabi'i. Because he was a Tabi'i, he was a Taba Tabi'i, so he would have taken the hadith from a Tabi'i and Tabi'i from a Sahabi. So only two narrations. Likewise, Imam Shafi'i, Imam Muhammad ibn Hanbal, because they were within the 200 year Hijri period. So now, if we say they have derived the law from a weak hadith, that means we are saying a Tabi'i is a weak person or a Sahabi is a weak person. Now, this is not acceptable. How can you call? A Tabi'i and a Sahabi to be weak to say that Imam Abu Hanifa has derived the law from a weak hadith. Actually, what has happened is in the sight of Imam Abu Hanifa, rahmatullahi alayhi, the way he got the narration, all the Imams, the way they got the narrations, they researched on it and they derived the rules from it. Later on, those who came, according to their research, because there were now more narrators added there. So according to their research, after the Tabain, after Taba Tabain, if one of the narrator was a weak narrator due to minor error of him, that hadith is regarded as a weak hadith by the latter scholars, not by the earlier scholars. No. So according to Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Shafi, Imam Malik, Imam Ahmad, that, that is in reality a Sahih hadith. Because it was categorized later on. So for the people of the later, later people, this has been categorized as a weak hadith. So if we say again that Imam Abu by by following their rulings of Muhaddithun, if we say Imam Abu Hanifa took a weak hadith, that means we are accusing a Tabi'i to be a weak and we are accusing a Sahabi to be a weak. So this is a, a wrong, uh, what do you call, uh, it's a wrong message given by such people who uh, speak against the Ijtihad. SubhanAllah. So what you said is like Imam Abu Nifa and the scholars of the four madhabs, they were there a lot earlier as of, uh, in regards to the six books of Hadith. Exactly. So they were there before the six famous books of Hadith. Exactly. And, and similarly, right. yeah. Yeah, and, and similarly, all the four Imams have said this as well, that if you find any Sahih Hadith against my statement, then throw my statement away. That is, you take the law from this Sahih Hadith. Now, by taking this statement of those great Imams, some followers who do not uh, follow the Imams, the Ghair Muqallid, they say, what we do is right. Because this is a weak Hadith, we are not accepting the law of Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Shafi. So actually, the thing is, those Imam who said this was not for the common people. They told this to their Mujtahid students, that, oh, my student, because you are in a you are capable, you are a person of uh, ijtihad. So if you come across any such such uh, rulings of mine, which goes against the hadith, then you have the right to follow the sahih hadith. This was for the mujtahid students. And the other thing is, those things were out of their humbleness, they have said this. In reality, said. what they derived is from sahih ahadith. Because obviously, those great imam who are followed by millions and billions of people since 1300 years, and they were accepted, accepted by the scholars of their era as well, how come they derive a law from a hadith which is not authentic? Why would they put people into trouble until Qiyamah? Because they were accepted by all the scholars. And even to the extent that Imam Shafi, rahmatullahi alayhi, being a great alim of Quraysh, about whom you find in the hadith, alimul Quraysh. The term alim of Quraysh has been mentioned for Imam Shafi, rahmatullahi alayhi. When he says that we are children of Imam Abu Hanifa in fiqh, how can you expect such a great imam to derive the law from the weak hadith? Yeah. And their level of precaution was always, uh, they always took the most precaution possible, all four Imams, correct? Yes. Um, and now, now that we have mentioned uh, Imam Saab, the, we, we've touched on the uh, four madhabs and how in each madhab you may have a different set of rules. For example, Alhamdulillah, we, we, we're Hanfi. We don't say that a Shafi is wrong or do we say the ruling, they've, how they've derived the ruling, what, what is the um, thinking one should have for his brothers in another school for like a Shafi Madhab? We have no Madhab. right to say any statement of any Imam to be wrong. We do not have right to say. What would we say is we follow one Imam. All the four Imams are correct. They have done from their Ijtihad, but we, we are 
following one imam ala hazrat imam ahmad raza rahmatullahi alayhi has clearly mentioned about this by mentioning the names of the scholars you have heard the name of sahib hidayah what a great imam he was the fiqh hanf the book on fiqh hanafi by imam uh, abu bakr marghinani rahmatullahi alayhi uh, burhanuddin rahmatullahi alayhi who who wrote hidayah sahib hidayah and many great scholars about them also ala hazrat says that they also do not have right to say that a imam have committed a mistake imam abdul wahab sharani rahmatullahi alayhi has recorded with the reference of sayyiduna sheikh zakaria al ansari rahmatullahi alayhi who was a great scholar of his time and who is resting besides the mazar sharif of imam shafi rahmatullahi alayhi in cairo so sayyiduna sheikh zakaria al ansari rahmatullahi alayhi says that until you become a mujtahid until you become such a scholar that you can derive the laws from the quran and hadith you do not have right to even say that so and so imam have committed a mistake they have erred we do not have right not for our, we people we are totally away we are far away the people yeah. like sahib e hidayah sahib e quduri and imam sarkhasi all those great imams they also did not have the right to give preference for one over the other saying that he committed a mistake except Allah Hazrat says that Imam Abu Yusuf rahmatullahi alai was of that type who got this capacity the ability to say to distinguish which is correct more correct which is more correct and which is not so are we equal to Imam Abu Yusuf rahmatullahi taala alai to say that this imam has committed a mistake no way when the great scholars of fiqh the great scholars of hadith the great scholars of tafsir when they have not given this authority to blame one imam who are we where do we stand and where do this ghair muqallid stand 100% 100% agreed with the imam sir uh hafiz um what i wanted to uh move jazakallah for the answer uh, detailed answer hafiz what i wanted to ask another thing which people put forward is that there are six well known uh, books of hadith sahih al bukhari sahih muslim sunan abu daud sunan al tirmidhi Sunan Al Nisa'i and Sunan Ibn Majah. Now, for those people who, if they see a hadith and they don't see any of these books in the reference, but they see anything else, what does that mean? Because some people are under the assumption that if it's not in Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, or it's not in these six I've mentioned, automatically they think, no, we can't use the hadith, or you can't read. So, are there other books out there which scholars reference to outside of the six? Oh, sorry, the line is being disconnected. Can you repeat the question again? G. Uh, so the six there's books some disturbance of there in the line. S- sorry, there's six books of hadith. Any, sorry, I think. Can you can you hear me now, Imam Sab? I think uh, we've lost them in transmission. Oh, Inshallah, we'll try to get them back. Let's just, uh, <clears throat> yeah, no problem. Can we just uh, add uh, Hafiz Saab back, please? Yeah. Yeah, there was some uh, network issue. Can you repeat the question? No again? problem. I will repeat the question. Imam Saab, there are the common six books of Hadith: uh, Sunan uh, Sahih Al Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, Sunan Abu Daud, Sunan Al Tirmidhi, Sunan Al Nisa'i, and Sunan Ibn Majah. Some people say uh, they put that if it's not in them six books, then we don't take the hadith. Are there other hadith sharifs out there from books uh, which are well known in hadith but are not them six I've mentioned? So our answer is very simple. What is the authenticity? You got to say that you have to follow only from the six hadith books. Did Nabi Karim sallallahu alaihi wasallam say that there will be Imam Bukhari, Imam Muslim, Imam Tirmizi, Ibn Majah, Imam Nasa, Imam Abu Daud? You have to take only their hadith written. Other than that, you are not supposed to take any hadith. Ask them to show from the hadith. So they accept those six books based on the statement given by the scholars of the hadith, saying that because it has been prepared in such a manner, chapter wise. the usul has been prepared in such a manner for that reason they are regarded as the most authentic it doesn't mean that the other books of ahadith are not authentic so the reason for saying that authentic is because it has been made chapter wise so our first question to these people is where is the hadith to say you should follow only these six books of ahadith 
And the second thing is those scholars who categorize these books of Ahadith as authentic, they also said that Imam Abu Hanifa's Musnad is authentic, Imam Malik's Muatta is authentic, Imam Muhammad's Muatta is also authentic, then why don't you take their statement? So you take one statement from a scholar and you reject the other statement of a scholar. That means you do not fulfill the scholar you fulfill your own desires. You follow your own desires. Whatever you like, you take it. Whatever you don't like, you reject it. This is like the Jews where Allah Ta'ala states in the Holy Quran, You bring Iman on some parts of the Quran and you reject the some parts of the Quran. So whatever they feel yeah. for their betterment, for their to fulfill their self-desires, they take whatever they wish to. So here also, they accept the scholars, but they do not accept the rulings given by the scholars. They accept those scholars but they do not accept the uh, authenticity given by those scholars with regards to the books written by Imam Malik or Imam Muhammad or Imam Adam Rahmatullahi Ali. Even Musnad Imam Muhammad, it has about 26,000 hadith and he was such an Imam that he had memorized one million hadith. He was such a scholar that he had memorized one million hadith. So can we say that he was not authentic? How come a person say that they were not authentic? Sayyiduna Imam Jalaluddin Suyuti Shafi Rahmatullahi Ali, as per some narrations, he has memorized 500,000 hadith of Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So how can we say they are wrong? And they are such great imam who have done service in the field of a hadith. So these scholars, the muhaddithun, when they have given some rulings with regards to Bukhari and Muslim, they never meant that you should not follow the other books of Ahadith. If that is so, then they have to show the evidence that those Muhaddisun said that you take only this and you do not take those kitabs. Jazakallah for that uh, answer. And uh, just to briefly summarize what Hafiz Saab said there, what he said is that those uh, individuals who say that these six books of Hadith are authentic, they will also say that the books uh, of uh, Imam Abu Nifa, the Muatta of Imam Malik are also authentic. But... They choose one from their scholars, a saying of the scholars, and they reject another. So what they are, in fact, doing is they pick and choose according to their desires from the uh, from the. I'll give you one example. The four models. Yeah, I'll give you one example from the Aqidah side. Now, Hafiz Ibn Kasir is regarded as a Mufassir. And the Wahhabi followers, they follow Hafiz ibn Kasir in Tafsir. They also follow Ibn Taymiyyah. And Ibn Taymiyyah is the first person to reject Wasila. He is the first person to say that Allah has a physical body. He is the first person to say to travel to Medina Sharif with the intention of visiting Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is haram. And if you go with that intention, you are not supposed to do the Qasr prayer also. You have to pray fully because it is a haram travel. Now, these rulings were given by Ibn Taymiyyah 700 years later. But in the same book of Ibn Taymiyyah, he has said that Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's wasila is permissible. Even Hafiz ibn Kasir has said that wasila is permissible. Also Ibn Taymiyyah has said that the dead, the deceased can listen to your salam. He responds to your salam. Your actions are presented to him in his grave. So now they take one statement of Ibn Taymiyyah, wasila is haram. Istighasa is haram, visiting Medina is haram, but where Ibn Taymiyyah said the dead can hear, dead can see your amal, your actions are presented, they don't take that. Likewise, Hafiz Ibn Kasir also have narrated this hadith under the verse number 105 of Surah At Tawbah, Waquli Amalu Fasayar Allahu Amalakum wa Rasuluhu wal Mu'minun. Under this verse, all the Mufassirun, including Ibn Kasir, says that your actions are presented towards your relatives in their graves by seeing your good deeds, they become happy. By seeing Seeing your bad deeds, they become sad and they pray for you. Allahumma la tumithum hatta tahdiyahum kama hadaytana. Ya Allah, until you guide them, do not let them die the way you guided us. So from this we understand even Ibn Kasir has this belief that the dead not only can listen, he also can pray. But these people, they follow Ibn Kasir, they follow Ibn Taymiyyah, but they reject this belief. So they take, as you said, pick and choose for whatever, uh, for yourself, for their self-desires. Jazakallah for the Hafizab. So Hafizab has actually uh, given us a few examples of, uh, I'd say, uh, double standards where they follow this one scholar on certain matters, but then that same scholar will have this view on other matters they don't follow. So they pick and choose. So this seems to be a trend uh, showing uh, which Hafizab has told ourselves. Uh, Hafizab, uh, in regards to books of Hadith, which are not the six books. Can you mention a few that are well known amongst the ulama and which are used a lot outside of the six uh, hadith? 
Yes, Just Imam Bukhari. I know there's a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Imam Bukhari, rahmatullahi alayhi, he had memorized 600,000 ahadith. Out of that, 100,000 were sahih ahadith. He has mentioned only about 7,000 in Bukhari Sharif. What about the rest then? So he has recorded that in Al Adabul Mufrad as also in Tariq of Imam Bukhari. Similarly, Imam Bayhati has written the books of Book of Ahadith. Imam Jalaluddin Suyuti, Al Jami al Sagir. And similarly, you find the book of Imam Malik, Rahmatullahi Alayhi, Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, Rahmatullahi Alayhi. So many such books of ahadith are there. Even what do you call Allahumma salli wa sallim mubarak alayhi. Darimi is there. Uh, and uh, Sunan, uh, sorry, Tabarani is there. What a famous hadith book is Tabarani. Maj, uh, al Mu'ajam al Kabir by Imam Tabarani, which is in three forms like Sagir, Awsat, and Kabir. So these are very authentic books of ahadith, which they do follow, they do have their in libraries, but this statement particularly who say that we follow only six, this is not told by a person who has intellect, only a person who does not use his intellect will utter such manner. Jazakallah. So a beautiful point that you've mentioned there, uh, Hafiz Saab, that Imam Bukhari, did you say six, seven, uh, was it 500,000 he memorized hadith? 600,000. 600,000 600, hadiths Imam Bukhari memorized, but in Bukhari Sharif, there is only 7,000. Uh, 7, so yeah. what about them other uh, hadiths? Just because it's not in Sahih Bukhari, are we going to deny them? But even though it's coming it's from obvious. the same... Obviously, yeah, yeah. It's coming from the same great Imam, Imam Bukhari. Great, and obviously yeah. we know... Yeah, and we know the waqiyah of how... Uh, how much precaution Imam Bukhari took when he would uh, take Hadith Sharif as well. Exactly. So we know... Yeah. Uh, yeah, so that is a beautiful point, uh, Hafizab. Thank you for uh, raising that with ourselves. Uh, and with regard, yeah, sure. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, with, Officer. Yeah, with regards to that, the da'if hadith, when they say, now when we say that Hafiz ibn Kasir has recorded the hadith, that the deceased can listen, can pray, they respond to the salam, they say these are weak hadith. Now, they should also realize this fact, had they read the usul of hadith only, if they have not read the usul of hadith, they won't talk about this because they can't talk. Now, those scholars who have categorized ahadith such as Hassan, Sahih, Da'if, they themselves have said that one thing, Da'if hadith are accepted for the virtuous thing, one. Second, if the same hadith has come through another narrator chain, and when there are Sikha narrators, then this hadith automatically becomes Hassan. And similarly, if the ulama are acting on that particular da'if hadith, now because of the practice of the ulama, that hadith becomes Hassan again. So they have given these rulings as well. Why don't they? Why why they don't follow those rulings? Why are they taking only what they wanted? So even if it's a da'if hadith, now obviously, let's say for example, if Nasiruddin Albani, the one who removed about five thousand ahadith from the books of hadith from Mishkat Sharif from Jalal and Sharif, from Bukhari Sharif also, from even uh, Tafsir ibn Kasir, they have removed many ahadiths, whatever they say, it is weak according to them or fabricated according to them. But the same Nasiruddin Albani, for one hadith, he has said this is da'if at one place. In his another book, he says that this is a sahih hadith. So the scholar who has done the research, when he himself contradicts, who are we to say because Albani said da'if, we believe it at da'if. So you say don't follow the imam and you regard Albani as your imam. So this is hypocrisy. 100%. SubhanAllah. That is, uh, uh, thank you for the half a sub. Um, now, what we'll do is we are towards the end of the show. If anybody has any questions for half a sub, uh, we'll take a couple of questions and then inshallah, we'll uh, close the show if that's okay. Inshallah. So uh, we'll wait for some any questions to come through. Uh, here we are. We have, mashallah, got quite a lot of viewers on. And, uh, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. They, I think we normally have a question and answer session in the evening after Taravi Salah. Okay. So I think they're saving the questions there. But inshallah, somebody will ask a question. Uh, but uh, whilst we're waiting for a question, uh, one question we've got is in regards to... Oh, here we are. Taravi ke baare mein bolne, please. Ah, so someone's asked, can you clarify in regards to Taravi Salah 2008? Please, this is now, a this, common question. This, mashallah, you have many scholars in UK, such as Sheikh Asrar Rashid and many, mashallah, great scholars with you, alhamdulillah. So, very simple answer with regards to this is, now you see, Sayyiduna Farooq Azam, rahmatul, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, when he conducted, when he arranged 20 rakat tarawih with jama'at, 
Sayyiduna Usman ibn Affan was physically living. Sayyiduna Ali ul Murtada was there. Even Sayyida Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu anha, whose narration they quote to say that Tarawi is eight rakat liyaras. In that narration, Gairu Ramadan is also mentioned. So if they say Tarawi is only eight, then they should offer Tarawi also in other than Ramadan. But they don't. Do, they don't do that. They bring this topic only in Ramadan. So the same Sayyida Aisha Siddiqa was physically alive during the time of Sayyiduna Umar ibn Khattab radiyallahu anhu. Why didn't she object, saying that you are going against the Hadith of Nabi Karim sallallahu alaihi wasallam? Did she object? No. Did Hazrat Uthman ibn Affan object? No. Did Sayyiduna Ali radiyallahu anhu object? No. Did Hazrat Ubay ibn Kaab object? No. No one objected. So this was the ijma consensus of Sahaba. Now if a person say no because we find in some of the narration of eight rakat so we will follow only that then they are rejecting or neglecting the hadith where 20 rakat offered by our nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam is proven for the sake of argument let's say that 20 rakat is not proven from the hadith of nabi karim sallallahu alaihi wasallam now this is a clear fact that our nabi said that alaykum bi sunnati wa sunnati al khulafa ir rashidin al mahdiyin follow my way and the way of the khulafa ur rashidin now hazrat umar ibn khattab hazrat usman ibn affan hazrat ali ul murtada imam hasan radiyallahu anhu they are among the khulafa ur rashidin so when they have agreed for 20 rakat to follow them is to follow the hadith of nabi karim sallallahu alaihi wasallam this is one thing second thing nabi karim sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in such a manner looking at hazrat umar radiyallahu anhu that o oh, umar the path on which you are shaitan turns away his path So now what we understand yeah. is And the one who follow the shaitan only will reject the path of Hazrat Umar ibn Khattab radiyallahu anhu. So it's very simple to segregate to distinguish that alhamdulillah we are following the path of Hazrat Umar ibn Khattab who has been praised by Nabi Karim sallallahu alaihi wasallam whose action was agreed by all the sahaba in consensus and you are following the path of shaitan because the one who do not follow the path of Hazrat Umar is in the path of shaitan so simple for them to understand whom are they following so in other words they say we should follow the pious predecessors we follow the salafus salihin but where are they following salafus salihin here they are not following the salafus salihin because the salafus salihin's practice was 20 rakat so they should follow that so and even imam bukhari mentioned... rahmatullahi alayhi also imam bukhari rahmatullahi alayhi also have recorded about 20 rakat tarawi in his tarikh in his other book he has recorded 20 rakat tarawi as well so one way you take imam bukhari in other way imam bukhari's other narrations you seem to say that no no that is not authentic who gave you the right to say that only this is right and only that those are wrong what are the rights we got to say subhanallah uh, um ramasabi said some beautiful points there i'll just summarize them so you mentioned hazrat umar bin khattab uh, did uh, the, the 20 rakats at that time hazrat aisha siddiq radhiyallahu anha was alive hazrat ali hazrat uthman no sahabi or rasul contradicted hazrat umar bin khattab saying you're going against the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam yes only later of people turned around and said you're going against the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and it's it's we don't know the deen the, and like you said hazrat umar is that sahabi the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that when he walks shaitan runs <laughs> and we don't know the deen as good as as good as hazrat umar uh, no so subhanallah that is a beautiful point and a beautiful way you've presented uh, the answers to us the answer to us so just and one aqida point in this as well that nabi karim sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he said that shaitan turns away his path from the path of hazrat umar that mean even shaitan is not hidden from the blessed sight of muhammad rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam sallallahu alaihi wasallam <laughs> Subhanallah, that's a beautiful, uh, beautiful. So we've learned a few points. Um, so uh, just the last point, which uh, Hafiz Ab said, is that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam can see Shaitan for him to say that Shaitan runs away. Number one, and also you mentioned there about Imam Bukhari. He used to he had twenty uh, rakats, uh, which they they prayed, they agreed on twenty rakats. So then, why are those why are people quoting Sahih Bukhari saying you can only quote these six books? But then, at the same time, they're not following uh, Imam Bukhari in praying twenty rakats. So, Jazakallah for that, Hafiz Ab. We've got one last question. Uh, uh, there's some issue in the network again, yeah. Sorry, I'll just go into the next question. Somebody has asked the question in regards to Olia being in different places at. I want 
I don't know if the questions whether in alive or yeah. Here we are. What is the proof for Oliya being in many places at once? This is not impossible because the thing, if it was impossible, then we would not find in the hadith of Nabi Karim sallallahu alaihi wasallam. For example. Rasul Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he went for Mi'raj, he saw Hazrat Musa alayhi salatu wa salam offering prayer in his blessed grave. He also saw Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam. And when Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam reached Masjid al-Aqsa, all the prophets who were sent before were present waiting for Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So now Hazrat Musa alayhi salam, Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam were offering prayer in their respective graves. Before our Nabi reached, all the prophets have reached there. So this also shows that those prophets of Allah, after leaving this world, they know the coming of Nabi Karim sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So in order to welcome our Nabi, they came in advance. So and after that, when Nabi Karim sallallahu alaihi wasallam ascended to the heavens, Hazrat Adam alaihi wasallam, who was here, he is there as well. Hazrat Musa alaihi wasallam, who was offering prayer in the grave, he was in Masjid al-Aqsa, he is in the heaven as well. <laughs> Hazrat Ibrahim alaihi wasallam is also in the heaven as well. So Imam Abdul Wahab Sharani rahmatullahi alaihi have stated. From the incident of Mi'raj, we understand that the prophets of Allah are capable to be at more than one place at the same given time. So when this is possible, so by the bestowal of Allah through the wasilah of Nabi Karim sallallahu alaihi wasallam, this is not impossible for the great awliya. Jazakallah khair. Thank you very much for that, Hafsab. Uh, and thank you very much for your time today, Jazakallah. Most welcome. Allah, it's been Allah. Very, Allah. very fruitful. It's been a very fruitful conversation. Inshallah, uh, we would love to speak to you again, uh, yourself again on a regular basis. Inshallah. 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 Jazakallah. Inshallah. Remember, remember us in your du'as. You and too. Inshallah, you too. We will speak to you again. Sure. Inshallah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa